What is going on, comic fans? It's another week. It's another fantastic week. I'm still on vacation, but it's coming to an end, and I figured I'd go ahead and do one of these videos, get my top 10 out there, because I have a little bit of time this morning. It's been a great trip. I appreciate everybody being patient as the content is definitely off throughout the week, and uh, I can't wait for this coming week's new comic books. I'll be coming right back into town to this fantastic list of reads. If you want to see what's on my list, don't go anywhere. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, and let's do the old school intro just for fun. I have not seen that intro in a long time. I appreciate everybody coming by the channel, checking it out. I do want to say a quick thank you to Big Time Collectibles. Be sure to check them out at their website on social medias. Also, Justin's Comics, uh, he can get you hooked up with the cleaning and pressing you can find him big time collectibles as well as my lcs abx linked in the description all the resources you could possibly need for all thing comic books are all down in the description so this week coming up is massive i've played the devil trying to keep up with what came out last week trying to read digital while i'm on vacation and it worked out pretty good and i didn't realize how big this next week is to massive things are happening and we're going to kick it off with the first book on this list i couldn't be more excited to have Nemesis Rogues Gallery issue number one. This is Mark Miller's return since Big Game, the big event he did that brought all of his original creations together under one comic book. This is actually a huge deal, not just it'll be directly following up the events of Big Game, bringing Nemesis back and showing us how he survived, but it's also Miller's first book now that he's moved over to Dark Horse. He has a lot of projects that he's officially announced and has been sharing on his social media that he's working on, including Huck Volume 2, Nightclub Volume 2, the finale to Magic Order, finally the finale to Jupiter's Legacy. But everything kind of hinged on Nemesis as we got into this interconnected era of the Miller world. So this will be the first solo title since it's all been interconnected. I'm going to be excited to see what happens with Nemesis post the big event, if he still has the resources of the fraternity now that Wesley Gibson is off the table, and what this whole Miller world looks like moving forward. Could it be more excited? I cannot suggest enough checking out the Miller world stuff. Next up from DC Comics, we have this week's issue of Detective Comics by Ron V. Now this is getting to a close. This is a whole era, kind of like a saga, if you will, for the Dark Knight in this whole uh, Gotham Nocturnal story. And we had Batman uh, face down the organ family, completely lose, lose his sanity, lose himself, have to go to the desert to kind of uh, wash the, the demons out of him that was uh, embedded in him by this Asmir potion, came back to a city that no longer remembers him. Now he's trying to gather his forces and his resources to take back the city, including a list of his rogues gallery working for him. Joker has entered the fray. Catwoman is really moving and shaking a lot of things for Batman. And we get this darker, grittier, wilder batman now that he has returned i'm excited to see this grand finale it's been building up for some time it's been beautifully executed ron v has been crushing it and another huge one for this week massive every time these books come up they will always be on this list but ghost machine is back with rook exodus issue number four we saw in that last issue finally dire wolf is in the book she's got rook they went to this uh this hideaway the second most important location on the planet that's dying under their feet all while Ursaw, the big villain who has the bear warden mask, showed up on his way on a warpath with other wardens. He has Swine's old mask as well as this lady who's wearing a uh, snake's mask. So he has other people on his side. And this issue is supposed to not just get into the dynamics of the battle that's about to go down, but why exactly Ursaw is so hell bent on conquering and taking over this world that's supposedly dying. So we're about to finally get. The answer I'm thinking to why Exodus itself is so important to some of these characters like Direwolf and Ursaw, because the readers are led to believe that it's completely dying under their feet and it'll be completely inhabitable in a very short amount of time. So why do they want to stay? We're going to find out. We're going to find out soon. Next up, another good one. Now, this last one that they did, Nice House by the Lake, was a huge hit. It suffered a little bit from a mid-series break. It was just a 12-issue maxi-series, but we're back with a sequel with the same creative team. Uh, James Tynan IV is writing it. Justin Birch is doing the letters, but Nice House by the Sea. I'm really interested. I'm definitely picking it up, and I, I, I think I am digging the concept. Think about it. So with Nice House, it was pretty much a, an end-of-the-world scenario where 
this extraterrestrial being was able to come to earth, make friends, learn about people and hand select who he wanted to save post the world ending. And he had like his own arc of people, an artist, an engineer, an astronomer, a doctor, and kind of one of each major uh, educational profession kind of thing. And it didn't work out. It just didn't work. So in this one, the, the entity that will be hand selecting the people for his house by the sea or her house, don't know what the entity will be yet. And uh, they're, they're supposedly telling people what's happening and letting them choose. So it'll be a different dynamic and be kind of a cool, like social study kind of thing to see how they all interact and how they respond to the world ending and everything they know coming to an end. So I'm, I'm, in, I'm interested for it for sure. I hope it doesn't suffer from a mid series break that really took the momentum out of the last series, as well as it made the writer assume that we needed like an issue to refresh when we're all like sitting on bated breath, waiting for information. We did a whole like recap issue that wasn't needed. So I'm excited for this. I just hope it uh, has a better flow than the first one did. Next up, here we go. We're getting into the absolute power stuff for this week. So if you're reading comics, you know, events are really hit or miss for people. This event right here is the biggest, most well-crafted event we've seen in years from any company. And absolute power goes back like building blocks for like years at this point. You don't have to read years of comics to understand. They catch you up. But it's Amanda Waller's onslaught across the DC universe that she's slowly been working on. And we have our second little mini series tie in here with absolute power origins. It'll be three issues written by John Ridley, but it'll be giving us the definitive origin of the Amanda Waller kind of adding to what we know to really show you what's her driving force to try to take out all of the meta. So I'm definitely in for this. It's a beautiful photo cover there. I hope John Ridley doesn't drop the ball with it like he's done in the past. Next up, our second absolute power book for the week will be green arrow 14. It's a direct tie in and we have the arrow family going after Dr. Ivo, the original creator of the Amazo robots. Amanda Waller has crafted an entire army of Amazo robots that are stealing the abilities from the Justice League and mimicking the powers of those that they steal, leaving them completely defenseless. She has Oliver Queen on her team at this point, and he's going to be trying to beat the Arrow family to Dr. Ivo. So we'll see how it plays out. We all know Ollie ain't a bad guy. I'm ready to see what his... Uh, his reason behind all of this is so far for 14 issues of Green Arrow, he's pretty much been uh, operating outside of the family structure that he has around him. So that's not anything new. So we'll see what he's doing. I'm sure all in the name to protect the ones he loves. But I do want to point out there's a beautiful direct market John Jang cover for this one. This will be available at your local comic shops. So make sure you let them know ahead of time to put that one in your pool box because you don't want to miss out. The perspectives on that is insane. And then for this week, we also have Task Force 7, issue number two of seven. So this is the first miniseries they started as a direct tie-in for the event. The Amazo army consists of seven different Amazo robots, and each one of these issues will focus on a separate one to kind of showcase them, show you what they're all about, and give you little hints as to what's going on in the bigger picture. And this one, we're going down under the sea to Atlantis with a character called Depth Charge. So this is the third character we've seen named. Rising Sun was the Superman one, Paradise Lost was the Wonder Woman Amazo, and now Depth Charge is the Aquaman one. This also has a beautiful variant by John Jang, a man of two worlds. I love the concept of this piece with half of Arthur out of the water, half of him below the sea line there. Just a wicked gorgeous cover. I'm excited for this one. Each of these Amazo robots have had this distinct way that they're dropping clues as to what or who they can be. We know they're embedded with personalities of multiversal Batman. Failsafe did that. But back in Batman 130, we saw the splash page of all these different Zur and Oz from across the multiverse. So I'm trying to play who's who and see if I can guess and handpick which Batman is in which robot. So far, Paradise Lost talks with a Victorian era dialect, also was reciting Charles Dickens. I'm thinking that might be the Batman Zur and Oz Gotham by Gaslight era, while the Rising Sun one talked very much like Adam West, as my co host Sector 2815 pointed out. Both of those Batman were featured on that page. So I'm excited to see what depth charge does, what little hints we get at which personality could be in there. Cause those personalities might be our, our clues out of how to stop them kind of thing. Next up from the Energon universe, this week's issue of Void Rivals. We have our main characters finally facing uh, the ones that are chasing them, but they didn't expect for them to have a transformer on their team. Void Rivals has been a blast. We had a major reveal in the last issue that they only exist. They were created by and have uh 
links back to the earliest days of Cybertron. Y'all definitely need to be on this title if you're enjoying the current Transformer stuff. This is where it all started. This is the backbone of it, and I can't wait to see where it goes. Another one I can't wait for is Dick Tracy issue number three, Mad Cave is crushing it. I do want to point out their brand new Flash Gordon title will be dropping this week, written by Jeremy Adams. I'm really thinking about picking that up and adding it to my pool list. It's kind of a massive pool list right now, but Dick Tracy's origin story is retold in a modern gritty way. It's still set in the early 1900s, and we're getting introduced to his rogues gallery, which he has a rogues gallery that can rival that of even Batman. So this has been a blast. And last but not least, speaking of Batman, Mark Russell and Al Ridd's Batman Dark Age issue number four, I think, is dropping. Well, they'll be rolling in some of Batman's rogues gallery and showing us why these costume criminals felt that they can step up to the plate and take on the Dark Knight while he himself is going to be getting help from a sidekick finally. Where Batman's earliest stories retold in a unique way. Really fun, fantastic, top-notch art. I'm really loving these right here. So that's it for my top 10 for this week. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you're looking uh, looking to pick up this week. Anything on this list that stood out to you? And what didn't I include on this that you're looking forward to? I know there's not a lot of Marvel on my list or rarely ever is. Uh, outside of Hulk and Ghost Rider, Marvel's got to step up their game. But that's going to do it for this week. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to check all the stuff down below. Like, comment, subscribe, share. Hit that join button. Become a channel member today. And until next time, as always, I'm Mark, but we are Legion.